hi there today we're going to be doing a little amigurumi snail so here he is i've added a little button at the top and he does have safety eyes but of course if you're making for a younger person i recommend you sort of stitch facial details on with a little bit of yarn rather than beads or anything like that you do have to be careful i'm using a double knit yarn i have a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook some toy stuff in that is a little bit just for his mouth detail and obviously my needles and stitch marker and i am using uk terms so i will sort of make sure you realize that because you may need to grab a hold of a uh, conversion chart so i'm just going to move these bits and pieces oh i didn't mention these today i've also got six millimeter safety eyes those are that's the size i'm using but of course as i say if you're making it for a younger person i'd recommend you just stitch eye detail on so i'm gonna put them to one side as well and um, we don't need that yet or that or the pink because we're going to start with the body so that's if i can find the end of the wool there we are we've got it it is quite a simple little thing to make um beginner could do it a little bit of detail on the shell nothing major but you can do it without that detail so i will talk about that as we go along so let's just get started so we have our slip knot onto the hook not overly tight make sure you can sort of move the hook and we're going to do two chain and into that first chain here we're going to do six double crochet so into the hole pull it through pull it through two that's our double crochet that's our first one that's our second one number three number four number five and number six so now we have six stitches but we need more than that we're going to now do two double crochets into each of those six so we find our first one making sure we pick up both sides of the loop and we do two double crochets into it that's our first one so two in every single one so this is two in number two two in number three two in number four two in number five and our last two in number six so we now have 12 double crochets i'm now going to pull this just to tighten up that center point so we have 12 stitches we need another increase before we do some plain rounds and that's going to be two double crochets in the first one one double crochet in the second one and you're going to do that six times to give us 18 stitches so here we go because we don't need stitch mark here so we do two in the first one one in the second one and i'm going to mark these down and that is my first set now the six remember so two in the first one one in the second one two and a one two and a one so that's four now we have a two and a one that's number five and our last one we have a two and i have a one there we go so that is as much as we're doing as far as increasing is concerned at the moment so i'm going to pop my stitch marker in now i have a little earnest here uh, one of our uh, signature stitch markers there i think i mentioned before earnest is a drawing uh, from my daughter we then turned it into a crochet which he is up here let me show you little earnest there he is um, and then we changed it into some digital work so we could have things like stickers and badges and key rings etc etc made so i've actually made some smart doll necklaces with them on as well so they do look quite cute so we're now going to be doing double crochet rounds and we have four of them so it's literally just all the way around stitch marker times four so off we go at this point you may wish to go ahead of me so you may just pause it and get yours done or you may pause it if you want to take a little bit longer doing it and come back when I've got to the end of it. There's lots of different ways you can manipulate the YouTube video. Either uh, slowing it down, speeding it up, pausing, stopping completely, etc, etc. So, it's always a, he's, it's always, there's always a way. There's always a way. So, I'm going to be working this at a basic pace, I think. I 
this yarn is very strange it's the same brand as a lot of the other yarns i've used but it feels fibrous does that make sense it feels because like, it's making a noise as well as i'm putting it through as if it's a bit hard right that was my first one of the four so off we go again this is our second one but yeah it seems as if there's like a fluff so i'm hoping it's going to show up well enough because i know as i look at it the whole definition's not there because of that but i'm sure it's not i know sometimes i do get sort of cheap balls of wool if i find them uh but i'm sure it's not but never mind it's working and it's a pretty color so we're almost round for our round two more and one more so it's just above the stitch marker that's our second round third round to come off we go i really do hope as far as i can see i'm using a new phone i've just got my new phone and the camera is better whatever you know it tells you whatever specifics they are um and my son confirmed with me it's a lot better i don't mind because i'm paying less as well for it on a contract so it's done quite well for me and it's supposed to be a lot clearer now looking down at the image from here it certainly does look clearer so i'm hoping it's going to make my videos a little bit better because they're going to be better quality filmed right that is round for number three three so we need one more of these straight rounds for now before we do anything else so off we go again this is the last time round we have 18 stitches here so if you are wanting to count the 18 and then mark off rather than use a stitch marker you will get sort of it's more precise to do that but obviously when i'm talking it's easier for me to pop the stitch marker in because i'll send myself to sleep i don't know about you if i just start counting up to 18 all the time and that is something I have done, fallen asleep whilst crocheting. You'll have to let me know if anybody else has done that. I think sometimes if you're doing something that's a very repetitive pattern, it just becomes so monotonous that it does, it sort of almost hypnotises you. Right, now that is the four rounds. And you can see, I have my pencil here, um, you can see the shape that is coming for its little head. The eyes will be going in soon, but I do need to do another round before I do that, because otherwise it gets in the way of your actual crochet. We're going to now be bringing down into the neck area, so we need to reduce a little bit. We're going to do two together and then four double crochets and you're going to do that times two to bring us down to 15 so two together first two together make sure it's nice and tight and then four individuals so it's one two three and four that's our first set the second set two together first Number three, when you know you've got three on the hook, you pull it through all three. And then four individuals. One, two, three, four. Two together. Four individuals. One, two, three, and four. So that's our first round. I'm going to pop the eyes in now, I think. I'm going to move my stitch marker up a little bit as well so it's not in the way and then if we sort of put him down like that let's grab these eyes we need to decide where they're going to sit so i think about that and there do we think there i think that looks okay i think that looks all right when you're happy with your positioning i'm just going to turn this inside out and then use these now these particular safety eyes that i use it's got to be dome up when you pop them on and these particular ones pop you can hear them click twice as well so are we ready one two so i've got two clicks there so i know that's on securely different brands different types you'll be used to what the ones you use but i do like these so tiny little click is the first one it just holds it in place but then there's two big clicks yep now i know that is secure Looks like a little alien, strange alien thing at the moment. Turn it the right way out. And there we go. These cute little eyes there. We have another decrease round. 
thought the wall was going to drop off the table then it stayed it stayed and it's going to be two together and then three individual double crochets so off we go with the two together first yeah then three individual ones one two and three two together one and two then three individuals one two and three two together and three individual one two and three we're back to the stitch marker that's brilliant we've now got just double crochet rounds and we have eight of them so i have my pencil ready again it's there with my paper i'm going to use my stitch marker as the marker but if you were wanting to count you now should have 12 stitches i'm going to get rid of that bit because it always annoys me when it's hanging about make sure before you push it in though it's always sort of tight from there because otherwise you'll end, you can get a hole if you're not careful. You can sew it up after, but you know it's easier not to have to. So, twelve stitches, eight rounds. Meet you at the end, perhaps, or stay with me. It's up to you. So off we go. As I say, I'm just going to use my stitch marker as my guide. Make sure you move it up after X amount of rows, though, or rounds, should I say? And that's already one done. I'll have one more stitch, but it's done. So it goes quite quickly, this bit. So that's one round. I will mark them off as I go. Ball's rolling about a bit. Behave yourself. Round two. I don't know whether you can actually hear the wall. Like I say, I can hear it sort of, I don't know whether it's, I don't know, it just makes a noise every time I put it through. I know sometimes you can get squeaky walls and that when you're working with them. But this one is making quite a funny noise. All right, that is two rounds now. Round three, we're working down the neck of this little snail. There will be a little tiny increase in a while, just towards his tummy area. And then from then on, it'll be straight and then just decrease down. So there's not a huge amount to it. It's a great size for using scraps of yarn. You've got, you could make them, you could, I don't know, you could make like dozens of them if you felt like it. All different colours and they'd look amazing. In fact, I should have made one a different colour. Because when I photographed them, then it would look quite cool and to have the different ones. That is my third round done. Round four. Although the variegated yarn I am using will give it a different shell colour. One thing that's quite nice about variegated yarns, if you're making lots of little items, especially when you're doing the doll things, each one's going to be slightly unique. And that is our round four halfway there i think we should move the stitch marker up we are doing a spiral system and sometimes it does alter its position so it is good to sort of move it up every now and then off we go again now when you're doing something that's this narrow i don't know if you can see i'm inclined to sort of put my finger inside like that and it just helps sort of keep the two pieces separate because sometimes there has been times when they sort of it's smaller than this they sort of flatten together and you end up picking up the opposite side as well which is not good because then you have to undo it so my finger in the way helps me guide where my stitch is going that's number five so we're round six now They're quite quick rounds at least. Oh, one more. And then that is round 
Six done. Way, we've only got two more rounds before we move on to the next part. Off we go. I hope everybody watching is still keeping safe and well. Um, I know here in the UK things are easing off quite a lot now. I hope we're not to, sort of jumping in a little bit too early with it. But I've had one of my vaccines now. I'm just waiting for my second one later this month. But generally we seem to be doing quite well. I know some places aren't and I, I hope that they're all going to be uh, feeling sorted a little bit better very very soon and I hope there's light at the end of that tunnel right this is our last round I'm doing because that was just seven and like I said we've got a little bit of an increase coming up one more there we go so we've now got an increase round and that is going to be two in one and then a one and a one and that is going to be times four to give us 16 stitches in total so two in this first one as an increase and then a one and a one that's one set and there's four of these sets so two in this one and then a one and a one that's my second set two in the next one then a one and a one our last set we have two in this first one and then we have a one and a one right so if i i'm going to move the stitch marker up so i'm going to take it out for a second if i lay that flat now you can sort of see how it's starting to sort of splay a little bit here that is good because that is sort of working towards his tummy area so what i'm going to do now is we have about another boring bit i'm afraid there are four rounds of double crochet so i'm going to pop my stitch marker in a little bit higher and off we go remember the 16 stitches now if you're counting your stitches we're over halfway definitely now for his body i nearly missed a stitch then like i was saying about the yarn is that sort of like extra fluffiness even though it's just a normal double net so it makes less definition for your stitches and that's our first round done mark it down another round one double crochet into every single stitch it would look quite nice if you did him in a thicker yarn as well because you'd get a larger snail in an aran or maybe a chunky beauty of the amigurumi system well any crochet system is you can just use a larger yarn larger hook and you get a larger item right so that's my second one third round it's amazing how much you can adjust a pattern just by changing the yarn also though you do get variants in different yarns that are supposedly the same thickness as well so you do have to watch for that Obviously, this is a double knit in the UK, but I am aware that in different places it will be termed as something different. So if you do need to check, like I say, I'd Google it and see. I don't know what areas do double knit yarn and which areas don't. Right, so that was another one. Ta -da! One more round and then we'll be doing a bit of decreasing again. I do believe this is a pattern a beginner could have a go at 
but I would recommend you be familiar with the Amigurumi system if you are going to be doing it. As long as you're comfortable with just the double crochet stitch. Oh, nearly dropped it. Where are we going? Spinning round. Um, you should be fine with this. Right, so that's my fourth. We've now got a decrease row again. Round, should I say. And we're only going to be decreasing by four to take us back down to 12 stitches again. And then we've got a long bit sort of here on the snail to do. So, two together. Remember, it's three. Pull it through all three. And then we're going to do a one and a one. So that is our first set. Second set, two together. Then a one and a one. Second set done. Third set, two together we have a one and a one and our last one two together a one and a one now i think before we go any further we need to start looking at a little bit of stuffing at least to get this part stuff because it does make it harder so i'm going to take the stitch marker out just while i do this because i need to move it up anyway and i'm going to bring in my toy stuffing I'm just starting to push it all in there. And then I think I'm going to use my pencil to push it in there. I do sometimes use scissors to push the stuffing in, uh, which does work well, but you do have to be careful that you don't actually push it through your crochet. Let's see if I can get you right into his head there. Now, what I also find is you push your crochet in, push your crochet in, even you push your stuffing into your crochet, and then you see what it does to the eyes, it distorts it. So sometimes you just need to... Give them a little wiggle about to get them back to a central position. Right, I'm going to take that bit out and I'm just going to do that for now because if stuffing gets in the way of stitches, it's really annoying. It ends up sticking out and all sorts. It's only really this top part that has plenty of stuffing in because as it bends, well, we're going to go in that way, aren't we? You, don't, you need a little bit less stuffing in this area. You've now got seven rounds of just double crochet. And there's 12 stitches in each, so we need definitely need that stitch marker in. There we go. And let's go for it. 12 stitches, 7 rounds. And let's start number 1. Very similar to what you were doing in the neck area. Again, if you're sort of uh, pottering off and doing this bit on your own, perhaps pause me, I'll see you in a few minutes. If not, and you're staying with me, or you need to slow it down, don't forget you can change it in the settings. And like I say, I'm hoping because of this camera, even in the, when you slow it down, it'll still look okay. So that is round one. Round two. Almost there for two. Round two done. And again, you can see I've got my finger sort of placed in it. It just helps, as I say, to get it through. Then my finger's a little bit sore, this one, um, because I've been using uh, some four-ply cotton, but I've been making multiples of some doll hats. And after a while, your finger gets sort of really sore. And depending on what hook you're using as well, as soon as I move on to the smaller steel hooks, they can make your fingers really sore. And sometimes they end up with like little calluses if I've got a lot to do. But to be honest, at least if the callus comes in, it doesn't hurt anymore. Right, that's another round done. So that's three. This is round four, which would take us over halfway. I know it can be a little bit tedious, this bit. can't believe how warm it is today. It's really warm in here because obviously it's warm anyway. And then I've got the lamp on me. And it's a little bit warm. I have a drink next to me. But, uh, I'm all right for a few minutes. Then we'll get his body done and then I'm probably going to have a quick drink. Ta-da! That's four. Round five. We're nearly there. 
If you wanted to make your snail with a longer body, obviously just add a few more rounds on. I think especially if you were perhaps using a thicker yarn, it might be worth doing a few more. Otherwise, that's supposed to be a little chunky uh, snail. But so if you want to elongate the body, it might be an idea if it's a thicker yarn. That's five. We've got two more rounds to go. And then we need to put a tiny bit more stuffing in as well. Um, you don't need a lot. I don't know whether perhaps I slightly over sort of stuff that. I don't know. I couldn't make up my mind. I like the shape it is, but I don't know. I've seen some that are like a flatter and they sort of sit better. But then I thought they looked funny because they were flat. I don't know. Each to their own. You know what sort of shape you want him. Don't overstuff, though, else you'll not get the shelly position. Right, so, last round. In fact, I'm looking. Oh, no, I have. I was just worried that I've not got enough stuffing because I'm going to need stuffing for the shell. But uh, I have got some uh, next to me. And there we go. I've got a little bit of decreasing to do yet still, but taking this out and I need that stuffing in. Yeah, I'm going to use my scissors, it's not playing. I don't know why, but for some reason, I don't know, it's just because of the metal or something, that the scissors seem to really work well. It's like if I'm doing something really tiny, not that I've done anything that long, I desperately want to do some minis again. I keep saying that, but it's having to sort of juggle it with everything else. Um, I would use sort of tweezers or something like that. All right, let's have a look then. So if he's bending about there, I want the middle bit a little bit flatter for this. And then, obviously, a little bit of stuffing there. I'm going to put a tiny, weeny, weeny bit in. And then I'm going to say that's it. I'm pushing it further down, though, because, again, as it, you don't want it getting in the way of your stitches. And then you can just move it along when you've finished. So, back on the hook. And we're going to do two double crochets together until it is closed. So, it'll just be decreasing as it goes. So, two together. Pull it tight when you're doing it like this though because you don't want any holes appearing so you do your stitch just pull it a bit tight you do your stitch just pull it a bit tight it gets harder to hold obviously it's sort of getting smaller so it's more difficult to control tighten it We're almost there. I think we'll maybe get another one in. You'll never get 100% to the end. So you do sort of like almost need to do a bit of darning at the end. So I don't need this for sewing up so I can cut it relatively short. If you're doing something that's going to be sewn onto something, you might need to leave it as a longer end. So I'm going to do one last slip stitch in there because I think it neatens it and fasten it off. Right, I'm going to give him a little wiggle there. Move his stuffing around to where I want it. I think that's about okay. And let's get rid of this spare end anyway. It's not needed for anything. It's easy to get rid of. So if you feel you have any holes or anything here, you can just sort of take it across. Look at that, the difference. And then we'll push it through. I push it through quite a few times. And I also try and make sure it pushes through the stuffing because the stuffing sort of holds it in place. easy when it's uh, one colour you have to be careful if you use more than one colour because it can show through if you don't get it in the right place right that is our little body done yay it's like a little slug at the moment rather than a little snail so I'm going to bring this colour in and get rid of that colour my cable was wiggling them and we'll have a go at this shell We'll do the antennae after. I've already done one antenna already. Now, as much as this is the same yarn as I use that, it's an odd yarn. It sort of stripes and then it spots. It's absolutely gorgeous, but you don't get consistency. But that doesn't matter in this particular case. So, slip knot 
onto the hook. This is a slightly nicer yarn to use actually. It's a little bit finer than the blue. It is still a double knit, but it does have that finer element. Let me turn my page over and I'm going to get a very quick drink. That's a little bit better. And off we go. Two chain, as always, into that first chain. Six double crochets. It starts exactly the same as our snail. Two, three, four, five, and six. We've already got a couple of chains. That's really pretty. Right, two in each to give us 12 stitches. So that is one. Two, three, four, five, and six. So that gives us 12 stitches. I'm just going to pull that tight like I do. And the next one's going to be an increase round also, but I'm going to start going into, if we look at this, can you see how we've got like a, a, a slight ridged effect? The only reason that's appeared is because I'm working into the back part of the loop or the stitch rather than the whole stitch. So that is what I'm going to do. From now on, it's all going to be in this back loop. But if you really don't like working on that, you can just do it in a normal double crochet. I just thought it gave us a little bit of an effect, sort of makes it look like it's a bit of a spiral going off there. Now, what I mean by the back loop, I will show you first. You can see that was more prominent, it's easy to see. You see there's two sides, one and two, yep. It's just going into just that back one. And that is what we're gonna do on every single stitch. And it leaves this top part to make the ridge. So we're gonna do an increase of two double crochets in the next one and then one double crochet in the following one which will ultimately give us 18 stitches because it's six times okay so two in this one back loop one in the next one back loop that's our first set same again two in this one one in the next one that's our second one two in the next one one in the next one, that's number three. Two in the next one. One in the next one, number four. Just unwind that wall a little bit. Two in this one. One in the next one, that's number five. Oh, it'll go through, there we go. And our last one, two in this one. And one in the next one so that's six sets you can see how that ridge is starting to come and that'll get more and more when you're doing it it just gives it a nice little effect i think stitch marker time let me squeeze it in there that's okay now our next round is just a double crochet round still back loop so just round to the stitch marker off we go it does feel weird just going into the back stitch. When I first started crocheting, I think I've mentioned before, I did do that without knowing because that back stitch is more obvious than the front stitch. And I wondered why my work had ridges on <laughs> when it shouldn't. Nobody else's did. It's basically because of that. And also I was going inside out. I made so many mistakes, um, which is part of learning. And I think from those mistakes, I learned not to make mistakes. And it taught me a bit of patience, I must admit, because I was determined to learn to crochet. And when I started, there was no YouTube to watch, so it wasn't quite that simple. So we're round again. So that's our double crochet round. Again, you can see how these ridges are forming you might see the ridges a little bit better with the yarn now it's doing like solid colors compared with when the one over there we now have another increase round i'm just going to check my maths there so we have three it's right so we're going to do two in one and then one in the next two and that should be six sets 
round to this stitch marker. So two in this first one, and then a one, and a one. I'll mark it down just to make sure I'm being more thorough. So I have two in the next one, back loop still, and then a one, and a one. Two in the next one, and then a one, and a one. That's our third set. Two in the next one, a one, and a one. So that is set number four. We're going to have two in our next one. And then a one and a one, two in the next one, We're almost there, and a one and a one, and we are there. Now, can you see already? It looks like that stitch marker has moved when you're increasing all the time, it will appear like that. So, you do need to move it every couple of rows, rounds. I keep saying rows because I've been working in rows. Right, so we now have 18 stitches. Our next one is just a double crochet round. I'm waiting for it to change colour again. It looks like he's going to have a mainly pink shell here. So back loop again, just all the way around, one stitch in each stitch till we get back to our stitch marker. The more you do going into the back loop, the easier it gets. It just feels a bit weird if that's something you're not used to doing. Oh, something else I've noticed on this as well. My other phone wouldn't really video beyond, I think it was 33 minutes, and then it would move on to a second video. I mean, they joined together easy enough. That wasn't a problem. Um, but this one's already on 37, so it must hold more. I don't know what it will go up to. So this is the first time I have used it. I'm hoping, I said from what I can see, it's looking promising that it does look better. It's not a posh phone. It's uh, it's bizarre. It's a Galaxy um, A52 that I'm using now. And we had a look at the, well, they showed me the specs for the S20 it was. I know that's, that's not the new one. I know we're up to 21 now. But this actually had a better camera than the S20. Which is weird because this is supposed to be more the basic round. Round, that's because I said about to say we finished a round. Range, should I say. Right, so you can see the top of the shell forming. So that was just a double crochet round. I will say round, not row. Now that was our two and two. So we've got 24 stitches now. We've got another increase coming. And it's going to be two in one, then one, two and three. Okay, and you will do that round to almost your stitch marker but because we've already increased it might take it slightly to one side so two in one and then three one two and three okay first set two in one then we're gonna have one two and three second set two this is the third one that was the second one so two in that one and then one two and three that's number three set then two in this next one then that's one two three that's set number four two in this one One, two, three. That was our fifth one. So last set, and you can see we're about there. So that makes sense. So that's why the stitch marker is handy, really. And then we have one, two, and number three. Okay. Now we're going to do just some plain double crochet rounds now. We do have four of them. I'm just marking where we are. So I'm going to take my stitch marker right up now. There we go, because we're not doing any more increasing now. 
you can see we've got the top of the shell forming and it's just one double crochet into each back loop double crochet so you have 30 stitches if you wish to count and we're going to do four rounds so i'm just going to get on with the rounds and i will see you in a minute if you're going ahead of me or if you're pausing me and we're doing four Now, I can't remember whether I mentioned on my last, I think it was my doll video though, so some of you wouldn't have been watching that, um, that I've been lucky enough to have got a contract with Search Press to do a crochet book with them. Now, I did do a mini Amigurumi book um, a fair few years ago now, so that was more miniature crochet. I'm not allowed to say what this is yet. I'm really excited about it. I think it'll be really nice. I'm really pleased. They've been really lovely with me and sort of, help me sort out what i've got to do it will be sort of late next year it takes a while didn't, you know so much there must be to do to actually get a book published um but uh, it's all in the process it's all started documents signed and i will keep people updated as i go so i say as much as i'm excited about it it will take a while so uh, you'll have to be patient with me if uh, it's something you might be interested in getting. Oh, where are we going? Stitch marker's getting in the way a bit where my finger is now. So that's round one of the four that we have to do. Second round. Feels like there's loads of stitches compared with when we were doing that one. Well, there is. There's a lot more stitches. It's not a lot, though, really, is it? 30 stitches. Um, but when we were only doing 12 on the rounds, um, obviously, well, it's almost three times the amount. Oh, nearly caught. Careful. If you don't like doing this back loop, as I say, you can just go into the whole stitch. It's entirely up to you. Um, but it is nice to sort of, if you've not done it before, to see how it creates a pattern and perhaps it's something you can translate into some other works that you were doing. Definitely going to have a pink shell with just that tiny bit. It doesn't, don't think, oh no, look, the colour might be changing. The colour's changing. Oh, that's as much as it changes and it goes back to pink again. It's definitely going to have a pink shell. It doesn't matter. Without me undoing a lot to get me back to that one. And then that's an awful lot of wasted yarn. It's one of those yarns that's designed for a cut to make a cardigan or something like that. And it does, it sort of stripes, it's self-striping. Um, and it, it does look really nice. But when you're doing a small item, obviously you don't get that effect. But he's cute anyway. Oh, nearly caught it. And one more, and I'm going to say I'm round for that one. So that is two. So two more rounds to go. There is a little bit of decreasing, obviously, because you can't just leave the shell like that. Um, but uh, there's not a huge amount to do. We're doing well. I'm just look at it. See, this camera is doing really well. It's up to 43 now. I wonder if it'll do an hour. I think the other one, it was weird. It's like it almost overheated. It got really warm when it got to a certain point and then that was it. It wouldn't film anything beyond that. I don't really understand the specifications on the phone. I'm just aware that it was a larger number so that that presumes it has a better capacity. Oh, we might get a bit of lilac. I'm just looking what's coming next. We might see a bit of lilac towards the end of the shell. A bit sad. I get excited about variegated yarn. <laughs> but I do. I just love it when you say, oh, it's going to change. It's going to be a different colour. We're almost there with round three. Yeah, we're changing to lilac or pur light purple, whatever. From the purple family, anyway. 
right so that is our third round i have just one more round and as i say we're beautifully moving into that lilac-y purpley color now so at least he'll have a bit of extra color on his shell it won't just be one color I'm trying to, I know this sounds a bit early, but I'm starting to think of some Christmas ideas. I think I might start a little bit of Christmas work from July. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know what you think. Do you want me to start doing a few Christmassy bits or is it too early? I know for some people, if they're making a lot of gifts or they're doing them for uh, church fates or school sort of, uh, I don't know, I can't think of the word. What's the word? Sort of little selling stores for the school funds and things like that. Or even teachers gifts and things like that. You sometimes need a bit of notice, don't you? So I might think early. There'll be a bit of a crossover with a couple of Halloween themes, but that's all right. Keeps us on our toes. Right, we're almost there for the end of this round. So that's our four rounds done. Yay! You can see he's got that little purple bit now. We now need to do a little bit of decreasing. We're going to do two stitches together and one DC. I'm just going to grab another drink. That's okay now. So two together and one. And it's times ten. Let's move the stitch mark around and we can say it's up to the stitch marker if we're not counting. So two together, still in that back stitch. Two together. One. Two together. One. Two together. One. Two together. one about halfway ish i say i'm just going to use the marker because i know it should add up it should bring you down to 20 stitches because we're doing 10 decreases so the two together is the decreasey bit if it doesn't catch there we go and then it's one dc two together one dc it brings it in quite a lot this two together one DC, two together, and one DC. We're nearly there. And this is the last one. It's two together, and one DC. Okay, so as you see, it's brought it in quite a considerable amount. We're going to have more decreases from now on. Next one's going to be two together, and then three individual ones. So here we go two together but then we need a one a one and a one okay so we're going to do that again two together a one a one and a one this should be four times four sets so we're decreasing by a further four Two together, a one, a one, and a one, and our last one, two together, and then a one, a one and a one now we're decreasing really fast now so the stitch marker is almost going to become obsolete so i'm going to take it out you can see we've got quite a bit i think we need to get a bit of stuffing in there push that bit in and let's grab this stuffing this is a toy grade stuffing i would recommend you use that if you're making things especially if they're going to be gifts uh, it is not expensive to buy, but it is so soft and it is so much better quality. If you can imagine, this is going to fit on like that somewhere. So do we need any more? Tiny, weeny bit more. Do you want him to have a, 
a soft sort of shell dear i mean that one's quite yeah that's about right i'll take it down a bit further and i might add a bit more anyway we have another decrease round we're going to do two together then two dcs times four Ooh, i've done so well not knocking it i've knocked it now it wasn't too bad hopefully you didn't get too much motion sickness with it so two together one Two. two together stuffing's getting in the way of it two together ah oh, drop the stairs so we'll do that again shall we we'll do that again you know, you've probably already done it okay two together a one and a one that's our second set another set two together stuffing's definitely getting in the way i should have stuffed it a bit later one, one. and a one one more set to go two together and two individuals one So now all we're going to be doing is, like we did with the end of his tail, two double crochets together, all the way around, keep going, keep going, keep going, until it has closed up. This is your last chance to decide if you want any more stuffing, and I do. I'm going to put a little bit more in. It's, it's amazing how much stuffing these things can take sometimes. I think that will do. I'm pushing it down as far as I can to try and keep it away from my stitches. And just two together, two together, two together until we are closed. Two together. It's a little bit harder when it's back loop as well at this point. Two together. Because you can't see the back loop because it folds in one if you want to just revert to a normal stitch you can do at this point because it is harder to pick up one two couple more see it doesn't want to pick up there it is so i said if you can get your finger in there it helps but obviously as the hole gets smaller that's not possible so i'm going to say this is the last one I can get in there. I will get in there. I'm having a fight here. As I say, if you want to do a full stitch, which I'm going to be naughty and I'm going to do a full stitch here. And that is it. We are as closed as I am going to get it. I want to use this for sewing up. So I'm going to leave quite a long end. So now on the first one, I didn't do that. And then I was having to add yarn, which is a bit of a so I'm going to pull this through. Where's that bit come from? I don't know. And let's get my needle to thread it up. Okay. So make sure if you want to just sort of darn a little bit over to make sure it's nice and flat. Remember we're not fastening it off because we need it to sew on. Give it a little roll, sort of shape it in. Now, how I actually attach this one, really, I attached at the neck area and sort of just on his bottom. I've not actually attached on that middle bit there. So it'll be depend on where you're wanting it to sit, really. So I'm going to go with his bottom first because, let me have a think. I think his shell's come out a bit bigger, aren't it? <laughs> It might be an illusion because it's a solid colour now. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to take it to about about there. Yeah. I'm turn it over about there. And I'm going to say that's where I'm going to attach it on his bottom. So I'm just stitching it into place. Turn it over a bit so I can get in. Very hard to show you stitching up because... As I know I've said before, I bring it towards my body to stitch and it's sort of hard for me to stitch it away from my body. So it's hard for me to show you really. So I've stitched that at the base of his bottom. So 
So make sure it's nice and flat, make sure I know where I'm going to go. And I'm just going to push the yarn all the way through to roughly where I want it to stitch here. I think about there, yeah. Boop. You see how it pulls it into place like that. So we do a couple more stitches, make sure it's nice and firm and you've got your shell into place. We do need to do an antennae, which I have one here. And we're going to do another one together. As always, slip knot time. And our two chain. But instead of six, we're only going to do five into that first chain. Five double crochets into there. One. Two. Three. Four and five. Right, tighten it up a little bit, not too much because you'll not be able to get in. We have five stitches now. We're just going to do, let me count the rows, one, two, three, four, five. You're just going to do five rounds of just one double crochet into each, which does feel a little bit fiddly. Now you can go into the full stitch. No, we're not doing back loop, it's just full stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And you can see it just curls up into a ball. So stop after you've done your first one and you need to push it out if necessary. And so carefully use your scissors or a pencil or something like that just to sort of push it outwards because then it's easier to work on. If it's going the other way, you're just not going to pick it up adequately. So five, that was our first round of five. So second round of five, one, two three, four and five, so that's round two, round three, one, see I'm using my finger again best I can to hold it apart, two, three, because this is where it will go together if you don't, four and five, another round, this is round four, one, Two, three, four, and five. Did I say that was four already, didn't I? So we just need one more round. That middle bit's annoying as well. If you want to cut that off, as long as you made sure it's really tight here. In fact, let's cut it off. I'll show you what I mean. So you can cut it off and get rid of it, but do make sure it's tight there because otherwise that can come undone. I can't remember where we were, so I'll go with one. Might be a bit longer now, this one. Two. Three. Can you see how it almost joins here? So you've got to keep it separate, otherwise you'll start decreasing without even knowing it. Oh, look, can you see what it's done? See how it's picked up the other side? Because my finger's not in the way. But if I put my finger in the way, four and five. And that is it. That is it. Right, so I'm just going to pull that through. Then just give it a little sort of, a little squeeze and it'll sort of lengthen it and position it better for you. So we're sort of lengthening it and positioning it. And of course, the little antennas are then sewn into place. I know sometimes, uh, I did do an extra one on that, look, it looks too long. Um, sometimes people will do eyes on the end of the antennas. That's another way of doing it. I just fancy popping his eyes there. Up to you, whatever design you decide with that. I use this just tiny little bit of yarn and just stitch just a little V on the mouth like that, just to give it the extra detail. And this was just a flower button that I had. You could use any sort of sort of flower, bow, um, buttons, whatever you've actually got that you could attach to decorate. Again, if it is for an older person or an older child, that is okay. But obviously if it's for a tiny, make sure we're safe with all these details so that's it today for our snail i've got to finish this one off i'm going to go and take some photos and like i said fingers crossed the photos are going to be clearer as well as the video which will be fabulous and i'm going to leave it at that for now if you enjoy what i do please like subscribe and share it does make a difference to us and i hope to see you all very soon with some more crochet and i've got lots of ideas i just need to get them all in order at the moment so thanks again for watching bye bye for now